Her voice needs to get more hype when there's not many exclamation points. Yeah, no, I agree. Two words. Serpent words! Orc undead. Oh, that's pretty good stats. I'll, uh, I'll do it next game, Dragon's Fan. This is a... This is too rare to be against so good stats. So, uh, I should switch to my alternate account. Hey, Runaway, what's up, man? What do you want? I remember you said you wanted some uh, replay analysis. You can always message me a replay file too, Runaway. If I don't get to it on stream. What's up, Araskun? Sakman, dude. That means I don't always play it, but it is my main, and I'll generally do better as it. Uh, I'd say he probably finished his, uh, this if he went for goal opening. I don't want to have to make a wasted trip. He didn't finish. I should have gone right away. I thank you, my Lag. That sucks. That's quite laggy. Can that really be legit? Maybe. I don't know. Possible. Are you hero and obey? Yes, Lord. 
Are you hero and obey? What do you want? What task is there? Excellent choice. What do you want? Excellent. Master, are you hero yes. and obey? Master, we're at your attack. What do you want? Oh, yes. Master, what task is there? Yes. Zuxum, I am yours. Huh? What task is there? Yes. Excellent choice. Master, yes. Oh, what do you want? Are you hero and obey? Yes! Yes! What task is there? Excellent choice! Are you hero and obey? Excellent choice! Are you hero and obey? Yes, Lord! Hey. Yes! Master. Excellent choice! What do you want? Oh. Yes! Master! Are you hero uh -huh. and obey? Hey. Master! What task is there? Yes, Lord! Yes! Stop! I am yours! Yes, Lord. Huh? I am yours. Yes. Excellent choice. Yes. Huh? Where are the task is there? Huh? Are you hero oh. and obey? Excellent choice. I am yours. Yes. Excellent choice. Hey. Are you hero and obey? Master. What task is there? Yes. I am yours. Hey. Are you hero and obey? Excellent choice. Are you hero and obey? Hey. Greetings, friend. Master, what task is there? Excellent choice. Huh? Oh, I don't see ah. something. What do you want? I am yours. Are you hero and obey? What task is there? Right. Yes. Yes. I am yours. Oh. Yes, Lord. Oh, really nice micro by him, by the way, on the skeletons. Oh, 
be my next oh, big dad. Mm. We are enemies. I am yours.
Excellent choice. You fast. Oh, we're under attack. <laughs> Look, how do I kill fast? Need something. That's why I usually don't bring Kodos on dangerous missions. Are you here and obey? Oh! 
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I am So I try to save on 50 for as long as possible and to push him over. Expansion was my original in uh, intent, but I realized I got enough money from, money from pillage and wasted TPs that eventually I could just produce army off of one base. I had really good unit upgrades. Greetings, friend. And then finally the TP. He didn't believe that I could field an army that could defeat his anymore. He was 100% in the hit and run mindset. So when he TP'd, that was actually pretty damn good for me. Besides the Kodo that got surrounded, he couldn't move. I got good war stomps and his fiends were out of position. Yeah. I like that game. Uh, Sinar96, Sign Basher, Pow Pow Cow, and first, first Goer. Thank you guys for the subs and resubs. Thanks, Waffles. Uh, replay, yay or nay? How come you don't play in green? Uh, you can't. In StarCraft 2, your own color is green when you do allied colors, but in this game, it's blue. I prefer green, but you can't choose in ladder. Okay, let's look at the replay. I see more yays than nays. Uh, also, a question from Four Brighter was, can you have that good stats? I, I think probably not, but at the same time they have it, so I, I don't know if there's abuse or not. Ready to work. Ready to work. Why do you always start killing range Ready creep than melee? Range creeps have higher damage and less Ready HP, and melee creeps are the opposite. They are tanky, but not much damage, so you should always kill the range first. Also, many range creeps are irritating. They do Purge, which is a slow and a dispel, and they do Poison. Uh, poison, uh, you need to stop Poison before it hits all your units once or twice, because they all take damage over time. Poison is by far the highest DPS in this game. No, not DPS, total damage. So, because I didn't scout him, I didn't realize that if I had done the green cap and then go straight to him, I'd be able to be far more disruptive than if I had uh, showed up as late as I did. So I got into a really awkward situation. Nonetheless, one of the ogres was stealable, but like I said, there was more lag, more latency than I anticipated. So the blade waited for like a, a fraction of a second and then he did for a fraction of a second. Why never shamans to purge frost armor? Shaman is probably the weakest or no. Shaman is 100% sure the weakest unit in the orc arsenal. Just in per pure terms of mana, cost, mana pool, HP pool, damage, it's just weak. 
His spells are marginally useful and he's just really bad numbers. This was a really bad fight for me. He did so well. He was really good at all the small little things like killing his own skeletons. He saved everything. It was really impressive. The only thing that this cost him was he didn't make Slaughterhouse because he was too busy. 600 plus gold. And the thing that he did get was tier 3. And also Undead always has money problems at this time. If they lose TP at this time, they will not have one for a while. So they have to play extra careful. At this point, I got a lot of creep advantage back because he didn't dare to start. One PN died? Oh, okay. Yeah, but I thought I was going to kill like three and a hero, but I got only one. He did by invo, of course. I still think he did well. It's, yeah, it's like what Teddy P said. By the time you get Bloodlust, the enemy has mastered the spell. Purchase single target disabled, not very useful. And Lightning Shield is situationally useful. And situa situ situationally damaging yourself as well. Okay, so there was something really bad that happened that I want to look at. I was very happy with these base attacks because I have 45 burrows and I got pillage money out of this and he has to repair. But there was something really bad that happened, which was when he wanted to gain access to the bottom left creeps and I tried to stop him, but I was not successful. So here's where I st start attacking the statue. I can't. He hurts blade a lot. Okay, I get the statue, but I have to use... Speed scroll and uh, wind walk and invil. That's okay. That's an okay sacrifice. But then he gets the whole camp, and that's not as attractive. He's now getting level th four three two soon, and I am two three two. At this point, I had a choice. I either go all in on his army, and I do a big fight, while he has distraction with the creeps, or I go to his base. The best choice by far was to go to his base. And I felt like I should go to his base as well. But there was something unattractive about going to his base to me. And I thought, no, I can't let him get the camp. Maybe I can fight at the camp. Look at this. He has no TP. He is getting money and he's getting TP. But if I had gone to his base and I, I'm reaching in like five seconds, he will not start the camp. He will have to TP and then I get the camp. Or he decides he finishes the camp and then I kill his altar and do half-life damage on his black citadel. Either way, both of those were far more useful than what happened here. Let's see what happened. Okay, I kill one ghoul. He uses one healing ward. I kill another ghoul. Or it dies. He uses another healing ward. I lose a raider. Yo, thanks, Azilo. So I lost my first unit. He lost two ghouls. I lost a raider and he used two charges of a healing ward. And he uses invil as well. I don't eat. He uses the final healing ward. And I use TP. So it is three healing wards. Which is the value of... 400 gold. You can sell it for 200. But no one sells it. That means that... People value it at higher than 200. If you were able to purchase it at Marketplace, it'd be 400. Mm, so let's say the value is between two to 400 gold. Let's put it at, it's a pretty good item, but it's pretty easily canceled. For Undead, I would say it's it's pretty okay, especially since I don't have Dispel and I only have one or two range units usually. So I would say the value is probably around 250 gold. So he used 250 gold heal ward, Invil potion 150, that's 400. He lost two ghouls, which he will have to replace eventually if you look at his lumber income. One of them gave me XP, but then I lost TP 350 gold and a raider. So, raider and TP are replaceable. He ward is unique. I would say the losses are slightly better for me, but he gains access to the camp and he doesn't lose any HP in his base. So it was definitely better if I had gone to his main base. That's, I think, my biggest tactical mistake I made. 
Now he's level 432. I am still 232. And the he remakes his ghoul, but he also feels compelled to scout with ghoul because he's like, what if he expands here and there? Very important tip if you're an undead and you struggle with orc in the mid game. First of all, on small maps, it's a race to get all the creeps. He did this very well. Secondly, it's about continuously checking the expansion. I know what it's like to be a noob in a game, and I definitely know what it's like to be very busy with something and get preoccupied and forget something and then say, oh my god, he has an expansion with five towers, that's so unfair. But besides the fact that I don't have that much... Uh, I actually have lots of lumber, lol. Uh, besides the fact that I... Uh, no, not that. So uh, I could definitely put up five towers like that, and it will take... 20 seconds to walk there, 25, and 60 seconds to build. So I, I would need him to be unattentive for 70 seconds. So he definitely has to keep checking it. And it's not enough to check it with a shade or an acolyte and then slowly start walking across the map. You really need to be there with your army now and then. And uh, of course, if you can't beat my army, that's a different story. Kills the peon, goes home. I'm very happy that I was able to save the Kodo. Do lose a Raider, but then he used TP and I didn't. And I think I killed a statue or something. So I just want to check when he went over 50. I do believe that eventually he made Necropolis here. And I think that he went over 50 when he made this statue into a destroyer. Let's let's check it out. Very lucky not to lose any peons there. Lose another raider, but I get easily I get back the money from his black citadel. <laughs> what would you do if you were undead in the situation with the base trade threat? That's the thing. I pretty much lose all my undead versus orc games in general, early, mid, or late uh, these days because I'm not uh, sharp enough with undead in any shape or form. Neither build order nor fight micro nor map control. So I can't really comment it from the other side. If you talk, if you ask me about Night Elf, I usually have a very good idea what Night Elf should be doing. With human, I'm a little bit murkier. And with undead, it's super murky. So I'm not saying that I would beat any undead. There's definitely something to be done, but I'm not the right person to give you that answer. Just honest. Okay, so I think I sent him over 50 when he wanted to save the statue coming up soon. Yeah. Oh, he went over already. So the gold left is 1100 and 1000. So the amount of money he's going to lose from going over 50 now is 350 gold. So it's not too bad. He loses the 350 for being over 50 with the last gold, 350. So sending him over 50 was not super significant. Moreover, he felt he needed that big of an army to contest me. But because I had saved up so much, my army is going to be bigger than 60 foot. He would get to about 60 because he made lots of cigarettes apparently. And two extra necropoli. He's got 80 cap. And I don't think he... Yeah, he didn't actually max out. First of all, he's got 350 gold left. I have 240. Secondly, he's got a lot of things to unsummon where normally, if it was a pure stalemate game, he would be unsummoning stuff and he would push to 70 foot. Almost. He would sell Staff of Tele. He would sell two Necropoli. He would sell Crypt and he would make like two more Banshees in a statue. Something like that. So he'll be maybe 67 foot. But instead he fight because he really did not believe that... Unholy Aura 2. That, that I would be able to have a strong army. And if you look at his vision, he sees some raiders, few headhunters. Chances are he didn't check my upgrades. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. And then the rest is history, right? Kodo-wise, not an attractive position. But he actually did far less DPS on Kodo than I thought he would. And somehow I kept it alive for so long with two healing waves and 
a heal scroll as well. And the funny thing is, if his army was in standard form with mod with a small modicum of body blocking, and he would have Crypt Fiends and uh, Orb of Corruption focusing Kodo, it would go down like that. The reason it didn't die fast is because he only has a Banshee, a Destroyer, and three heroes attacking it. Maybe there was a Fiend there originally? Was there? Maybe not. So it's actually hilarious how long it survived him. Yeah, not a good position for him. Just a misjudgment a bit by him. Yeah, it makes sense that he would make Necropolis at home because he wanted to prevent um, me from attacking his uh, Black Citadel, which would give me a lot more money with Pillage. I'm way too late there. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's doing the Drake now. I mean, I checked almost everything else. Yeah. Sucks. Oh, I got it. What you want? Good 